Hello, my loves. If you're watching this, I truly respect your dedication because this is going to be kind of long. I have it on 2000 speed and it's still going to be kind of long. Uh, but I wanted to explain how I have set up my Sims 2 test of time challenge. So as far as I can tell, in the original rules, you set all of the seasons to summer, um, which I decided was, I don't know, too easy? A cheat? I, I don't know. I just decided that for me, I wanted to do something different. So the first thing I did was I decided on what I wanted out of my test of time challenge. And what I decided I wanted was I wanted to do berry sims. So I wrote down all the colors of the rainbow. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, indigo. <laughs> I couldn't remember the rainbow for a second there, but I wrote down all the colors of the rainbow. Uh, then I wrote down white, black, and gray. And I used the pooflet method to generate my sims. Now let me tell you, I don't know whether I did the pooflet method wrong, or if the pooflet method just generates one hell of a lot of weird looking sims, but I, uh, <laughs> I named the one family uh, the Fisher family, and I named the female sim Boot because her face looks like one. She looks like she received a boot to it. I mean, genuinely, I, I, I don't even know where to begin with how bad some of the faces came out, but I decided to commit to it because, I don't know, I like a challenge and I like having more and variety, I guess, in my game in a lot of ways. So I went through and I used the body shop and I used the pooklet method and I made two sims for each color of the rainbow plus white plus gray plus black and then all four of the default skin tones with my own default replacements of course so the skin one skin two skin three and skin four plus all of the colors of the rainbow i randomized the aspiration i randomized their zodiac i was attacked by pink soup it went horribly wrong a couple of times but it happens i randomized the aspiration i randomized their zodiac and I randomized their turn-ons and turn-offs. I used random.org or dice or both, I can't remember. Um, I did not pair aspirations to zodiacs. Um, I know that Pleasant Sims, where I got the idea of the test of time challenge to begin with, does that, but I, I don't like that. It's not that I have a problem in general with the idea of having zodiacs paired to aspirations it's more that in real life sometimes you'll have a really neat personality but you will like aspire to be a pleasure sim like you just want to relax but you also want to make the house queen and i do get that being a romance sim you might be outgoing might be a better option but to me at least i find that i i like randomizing the aspirations more. I think that gives me more variety. I love the idea of a shy romance sim or a very outgoing family sim or, I don't know, I, I just think it's a really, I like randomizing my aspirations is the whole point there. So when I was making the sims, I was thinking about like where they would be. Um, for my test of time challenge, I made four worlds. Uh, one is like a normal world where the seasons go spring, summer, autumn, winter. There's like a beach, seafront, ocean world. That one goes um, spring and summer on a loop. I also have the ice mountains, which is permanent winter. And I have the desert, which is permanent summer. So instead of um, of always having summer until later on i want my sims to have to cope with it <laughs> i like the idea of that i mean that's basically how it worked in prehistoric times if you had winter you had winter you had to be prepared for it we didn't live in a non-winter society I, 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 i'm not i'm muttering but yeah i decided i wanted to use berry sims for this so i have like a, a lemon yellow skin and a yellow skin i have an orange skin and i have a blue skin and a red skin and all the rest of it so i've made sims for each of them 
Um, I tried to give them berry hair colors that were sort of complimentary while also being a little bit random at times. Uh, I do have my favorites. I have one, I think she's the black skin sim. I mean black, not skin four. I think, I think it's her. She doesn't have eyes. The Pooklet method came up with a sim that just, she just doesn't have eyes. And it, it makes me giggle. Weirdly, some of my skins does, don't work with some of the full body outfits. I don't know why. I'm sure there's a reason. Uh, I did ask on the Pleasant Sims Discord and no one answered me. But I, to this day, I, I don't know. I don't have an answer for it. Uh, but I have a lot of the castaway and some of the medieval and prehistoric um clothing she this is her she's the one she has no eyes she has these big big elf ears and no eyes <laughs> and i love her i absolutely adore her um i tried to give them names that i could see going through generations so rather than just having like i didn't want to give them like random clan names but i also didn't want to name them like smith i felt like smith would come up more uh in medieval times when you had the blacksmith um so I was trying to give them names that I could imagine sticking around while still being cohesive for the time. So they're named after like berries or things like that. I think this is the skin one sims that I'm making here. I made them ginger uh, because I randomized the turn ons and turns off. Sometimes they, they just, they're just not going to like each other, which does make me laugh. It does uh it's very amusing and then other ones they have like three bolts of chemistry and i think that's really sweet uh so they're all pookleted some of them came out prettier than others i think a couple of the normal skin ones came out really pretty uh but i do have a fondness for rose is it rose mulberry rose Mul mulberry the the red uh female oh i love her so once I made all of the families, I decided where they would be going in the world. Um, I also decided to randomize the order in which I would play them. So I took, so I wrote all the names down. I went to random.org. I randomized the list. And once I randomized the list, I decided which order they would go in from that list. And then I broke down which families were going to live where. Some of them I had already made quite um like they looked more like they were ready for cold weather like the hunters and the mulberries and others looked like they were going to live on a beach so i put them on the beach i had a lot of trouble finding the things that i wanted um i have as of recording this voice if i have actually already recorded the first episode of um my test of time challenge the first rotation of the one uh, family and Without spoiling what actually happens in that episode, I really fucked up in a few places because I thought they could hunt. I thought they could hunt using the sun and moon stuff and apparently they, they couldn't and it's they're totally messed up in places. Uh, but I really enjoyed building these caves. I, I, think, I think I forgot that The Sims 2 has a lot of rooting issues. <laughs> I, I forget that in The Sims 4, which I've been playing I mean, obviously, I play Sims 4, I play Sims 3, uh, and I play Sims 2. But in The Sims 4, if you put a bunch of stuff on the floor and you give them a bunch of, like, rocky terrain, they can root over it pretty easily. You don't have these rooting issues. Whereas in The Sims 2, even houses like the Broke Trailer or... Um, what's the other one I'm thinking of? The Goth House or the Caliente Condo. The Caliente Condo drives me up the wall because they are constantly rooting through the bathroom rather than just using the hallway because the rooting is just diabolically bad. I also didn't know at this point that I needed to put down a swimming pool somewhere on the lot so that they would, so that the water would look right. I do fix that later on, uh, either later on in this recording or later on like during the first gameplay. I'm not sure which. But I made the, the, the terrain really sort of rocky and I regret that. <laughs> I'll have to fix that as I go along. I discovered through during my first episode that making the terrain really sort of rumbly bumbly under them was a horrible mistake. And the only thing they could actually use was the beds because I have inches in accessible beds. <laughs> I was really proud of this cave as well. I thought it looked great. Uh, I put some sun and moon spider spawners down as well. 
and like rat spawners uh, and apparently they just die randomly and then the environment score goes down and I, phew, yeah you'll, you'll have to watch the episode when it comes out it's a nightmare in all the best ways it's a nightmare if you like chaos <laughs> if you like to watch someone play the sims 2 and absolutely thrive off of the level of chaos it is bringing you will like my test of time challenge i've done one episode and it exhausted me to the point i nearly went to bed early <laughs> genuinely it was so hard so i used these really gorgeous rock cc's to build up the look of the cave because i wanted it to look like a cave i didn't want to just have like a rocky house on the ground i did end up in an argument with the underwater underground lake area um the whole time i was building this all i could think about was these lovely underground rivers in skyrim which i adore i love skyrim skyrim's so good um but i couldn't at first of all i couldn't find an image on google i was like google skyrim underground water river place and google was like i don't know what the fuck you're talking about and i was like oh okay maybe maybe i'm imagining that maybe maybe i made up the underground river but i remember it because i went in there the one time and i went over to the river and i drank from it and then i died <laughs> i died of disease because unfortunately in the one mod that i had unboiled water gives you disease and to be honest, when I was building this and I'd thought about that, that should have set me up for every bit of suffering that I was going to be going through. Oh my god. So, uh, following on from that, um, I really enjoyed putting this down. I put mushrooms down from Sun and Moon. I don't know if they spread. I feel like they spread, but I don't know. I put mushrooms down. I put some plant matter around. Uh, my rule for the ice mountains is that they can hunt, they can ice fish, and they can um, harvest mushrooms and they can forage and they can go to like foraging areas, but they can't... See, I got better at it instantly, look at that. But they can't um, fish normally and they can't uh, garden. They can't do gardening. I may change those rules, my own rules later, and say that they can garden certain things. I'm sure there's some crops that can grow in the winter. I need to Google it. I did some Googling over what crops grow in the desert. So I just need to do basically the same uh, Google search for winter and see what we could get in the winter. Like potatoes, maybe? I feel like potatoes grow in the winter, but I might be wrong. I know there's certain there are certain plants that benefit from the frost but i can't think what those are i haven't gardened in a long time and i have a lot of the sun and moon uh seasonable seasonable what season season seasonal seasonal that's the word i have a lot of the seasonal sun and moon crops which i really like I, I really like sun and moon i love all the things they have i also have hunting spears and i discovered very quickly that if you put them on non-flat terrain they can't get a spear and so they can't oh. it's one of those things where i just i forgot i forgot that the sims 2 has rooting issues and so my first episode is basically me trying to get my sims to pick up mushrooms from terrain they can't root over <laughs> and it was a nightmare i also couldn't see some of the animal tracks i put down because of the snow it, you, you know it, it yeah I mean, I think I did well. You'll see when you watch the episode, I think I did well, all things considered. Although a lot of it was luck, but I was really proud of the build. It just isn't as functional as I would like. Um, so I'm gonna shut up now, let you watch the ice build, and then I will come back when we do the next ones.
Yes, I have returned. So unfortunately, I have some weird neighborhood deco, deco, deco decorations uh, that made, for some unknown goddamn reason, all of like a bunch of trees that I put down. It default replaces them into these hedgerows, and when I tried to fix that, it took the textures out but left the meshes. I have no idea why. I'm genuinely not a fucking clue what's happening there, and I. I whatever so i had to go through and delete all the neighborhood deco i also later i found some um road terrain replacements that just get rid of the roads they're just invisible roads which made me really happy i think i changed the terrain uh everywhere because of that uh, i remade it a few times because i wasn't sure with sure of what i had and i was annoyed by the terrain um i used um is it mutilda yeah mutilda's hood uh terrain replacement mod in the desperate hope that I could use that to delete all the hood deco. It didn't work. So I ended up deleting everything by hand. Which... <sighs> I broke my mouse. Uh, I went into... I have a... Dragon? Red Dragon? Gaming mouse with these buttons and I was like, Oh, I bet I can make a macro. I can bet I can make a macro so that I can have it so it just does click delete, click delete, click delete with every click. And I, I spent so long trying to do that, I, I broke my mouse. Hey hell. Uh, it still works, it just, I can't do anything with it and all the buttons are not working properly. I still have no idea why. I'll fix it eventually. It's not on my to-do list. It's not pressing, you know?
So once I'd gotten rid of all the neighborhood decor, I, there you go, I've got the word right this time. Uh, I went to the desert. And so for the desert, I decided I was going to do like some little tents because, so I've played a little bit of my private Pleasant View save and because it starts in summer, Cassandra and Don had a real trouble getting married because it was so hot outside they kept getting a heat stroke, which was a bit unfortunate. Um, so instead of making my sims get heat stroke, I thought I'd make these little sort of like wigwams or like sort of just like little fabric tents. I could not for the life of me find any sort of wallpaper that looked like fabric. I wanted something that was a bit like canvas or like tent walls basically. I wanted tent walls and I could not for the life of me find any. I went through the Sims resource, I went through Mod the Sims, I seriously I scoured the internet. I was looking on Pinterest, I was I thought about a cave for them. I didn't like the idea of a cave for them. So I, I changed things a thousand times over. Um, I think if this was um, Sims 3 or Sims 4, I probably would have built like um, a cave into a sand dune, maybe, but like in a basement, but it, 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 I argued with this a lot. So I decided that for the desert dwellers, they could, um, they could fish and they could have plants, but um, no water they couldn't fish in they couldn't fish where they live they have to go to the oasis for that the one downside of that is i don't know what i'm going to do about a sink and like the fetch water mod um i don't know if i can fetch water from community lots so i might just let them have a sink i there's not much else i can do about that uh but i did add like um uh, as you'll see later in this video i hope i think i recorded it i'm pretty sure i recorded it i added an oasis that hopefully they can swim in as well as fish if it worked correctly. Um, in the end, I ended up making something that looked passably like a tent. It's supposed to be a tent. Uh, I suppose it can be a hut and it's on flat enough terrain that hopefully they'll be able to use it. I really did think that I could get away with an actual tent sort of thing without having to use a tent, but apparently not. Um, so I just ended up stuck with this. It's better than it could be but it's worse than it should be. <laughs> I might end up making my own wallpaper or something, but every time I think about doing custom content for The Sims 2, uh, something in me just starts to cry. It just seems so complicated. Anyway, well, well, I'll come back to you when we go to Dagani.
My Dagani beaches did not come out well. There's apparently a trick to getting beaches to not look like shit on The Sims 2. I don't know it, so I just lined it with rocks. It's... It is what it is, I think is the phrase I'm looking for. There's not much I can do about it. It just looks like shit. But I'm happy with how it actually ended up coming out. For Degani, I decided to go for like an islander sort of vibe. So Solani being based sort of on Hawaii. At least that's the feeling I get. I've always gotten the feeling that Solani is based a little bit on Hawaii. So I'm basing Degani a little bit on Solani. Because I love Salami. Solani. Salami? I love salami. Yes, I'm, I'm a vegetarian who loves salami. But um, tish. There you go. Those are my, my, my cat, my Sims 4 traits. Vegetarian, love salami. And, I don't know. Child of the ocean. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I don't actually love salami. I, I don't think I've ever eaten salami. I'm, um, I eat fish. I just, I don't eat meat. That turned into a ramble. Anyway, so I decided to set, to base this a little bit on, uh, Solani and that. I'm actually really sad that I couldn't make it as nice as Solani, but as previously stated, it's what it is. Trying to set some, like, restrictions for every area. I couldn't really think of much for Dagani. Uh, so I sort of just ended up with the restrictions just being they could fish, they could they could hunt. Maybe hunt less, maybe, because they're on the beach. I, I don't know. Uh, they don't have a bed, they have the shelters instead. So they, they don't have like a fishing spot, um, and they don't have beds. And they have the castaway shelters, which... Uh, uh, much like the other ones, I'm probably going to have to smooth out a lot of the terrain so that it's actually walkable. <laughs> Uh, I didn't know at the time, but yeah. Um, I put down coconut trees, you know, palms, uh, plantain trees, I think. And I've also made a couple of, at least one, at least one um, beach lot that they could visit to get more, you know, trees and stuff, uh, coconuts and stuff like that. So hopefully they, I think of all of them, uh, the spring summer Dagani will be a lot. <laughs> I think they'll be a lot better off than anyone else, actually. Um, I think the desert will be a lot of passing out. Like, a lot, a lot of passing out. But we'll see. I, I, I will be back shortly to commentary on the next world. For the grassland dwellers, I I think they didn't really have as many restrictions as like the ice and the desert people do. I gave them sleeping rolls, which I pray will actually work, we'll see. Uh, and a bunch of trees they could cut down. Uh, I don't think, I don't think Dagani had trees they could cut down, they just had like palm trees. They had like farming plots, places to fish. The Astrakhan, Astrakhan? Yeah, Astrakhan is a lot closer to the base test of time challenge than any of the other worlds. I actually found it harder to decorate that one because I wanted it to look blended in, but I really like the grasslands just having a lot of trees. So I'm hoping they'll be able to do more hunting, foraging, and things like that. Um, again, I, I didn't really give them any restrictions compared to the others. I just let them have something nice. Obviously, I'm planning to set the money to zero for all of them at the start. Um, 
like I said, I've already filmed the first episode, which will go up next week, um, of, I think it's the Mulberries, uh, but, um, wow, brain, but, uh, yeah, I've remembered to make the money zero for the Mulberries once I loaded in there, uh, I need to do, the, do that for the other ones as well. I don't know if I'm gonna do the whole cast system from money because I know that that in the test of time challenge there's this whole thing where the the, the the emperor is the ones is the family that had the most money. I don't know if I'm gonna do that, especially since I'm basing, for example, Dagani is like sort of Hawaii-ish. Um, uh, yeah, I put some skyboxes down as well, which is pretty nice. Um, since I'm having like Hawaii uh, for one and like I suppose Alaska sort of or like russia for the other uh, there will be some crossplay, so i guess it's it's not when i say i'm basing it on hawaii i'm not actually trying to to mimic any sort of ethnicities or actual countries uh, i may actually generate myself a map to work out where i think each area is um i see the ice mountains a little bit more like russia than like canada so i don't know i might make a map I might make a map. We might do some world building over the course of this. I love me some world building. Um, but I know that the test of time challenge has a lot to do with like Roman Empire and things like that. I I don't know if I'm going to do that exactly. Um, we might do something a bit different. We might see what kind of civilization we create as we go rather than a specific like test of time challenge i'm gonna call it my adjusted test of time challenge because it makes sense to make it my adjusted test of time challenge but yeah i think i think we'll be a little less specific and a little bit more wishy-washy and have some creativity because i really do like being creative um like i said i love world building i have an ongoing yearly subscription to world anvil if you don't know what world anvil is it's a fantastic website I love World Anvil. Um, I also have a really big crush on the website. Yes, I have a crush on a website. Shh, shh don't, don't. We're not going to comment on the fact I have a crush on a website. I have a really big crush on the website Azkar. Azkar? Um, which is a fantasy map generator. And it's amazing. It's so good. I love that. So we may do like a map generator to work out where everything is and like... So, for example, if the one of the families, so the mulberries in the ice mountains, and uh, the lemons, I think, are in the. I'm like ninety percent sure the lemons are in the in Astrakhan. So, I'd like to be able to look at a map and think: Can the lemons offer their child to the mulberries in like a exchange of family breeding dynamics or? would that take years like would it take years for them to act to get to the mulberries would the mulberries have to be closer to the daganis and stuff like that i don't know i'd also like to state for the record that i filmed this and recorded half of this voiceover before everything went down with pleasant sims this week um she is a huge inspiration to me i am truly devastated that she has left everything she seems to have left everything i am genuinely beyond devastated uh you can tell by my content that she's a huge inspiration to me um i think my top inspirations at the moment are pleasant sims for the love of the sims who has also stopped creating content i am devastated about it if you haven't seen her channel uh i might if i remember i will put some links in the description to for the love of the sims pleasant sims and plumbella and maddie who is a cotton sock i love their content um they are massive inspirations to me maddie because she has this level of chaos to her and love of the sims 3 she's a, she's a sims 3 youtuber primarily though she does do a little bit of sims 2 now uh pleasant sims because i love the way she plays once based the, the moment that really sticks out to me in my head about Pleasant Sims is she was playing her Pleasant View quite early on and she moved Nina into an apartment complex and as Nina went in, she actually asked Nina, do you like it Nina? Do you want to live here? And watched her response and it was just, I love that and I also love that The Sims 2 lets you do that. I love that The Sims 2, it lets you have those 
moments of reaction from your sims and i think i, I learned more about the things you could do with the sims 2 from pleasant sims and i've been playing the sims 2 since it came out i've been playing the sims franchise since um i think 2003 when the sims 2 came out on the playstation and when the sims Bustin out came out and i've been playing the sims 2 since the day it released i got it the day it released and i played it obsessively i cried because my computer could not run it properly and so my dad let me play it on his computer because he used to work away um so he would leave his desktop here and he would go on a sunday night and he'd come back on a friday evening and i always used to miss him my dad and i have some beef it's a complicated long story that i'll probably hash out and trauma dump over the course of my channel because trauma but um my dad and i have some beef but i did always miss him when he left on a sunday night but i was always very happy to immediately i used to just i used to wave him goodbye turn on my heel and go straight through get onto his computer load the sims 2 and that game did not close until like 3 p.m on a friday and it only closed at 3 p.m on a friday because i had to and i think sometimes i used to play it i want to say i played it in the evening sometimes when he'd gone to bed but i don't think i used to stay up that late possibly i played it in the weekends in the morning before he woke up um but yeah i've been playing sims 2 for as long as it has existed um and I've learned more about The Sims 2 and everything about it from Pleasant Sims than... I'm hoping this is functional. I'm watching myself build this and I'm praying that this is functional. I have watched my Sims clip through those rocks a few times, so I'm hoping it will be. Um, I haven't tested it yet. Dear God. Uh, but I've learned more about The Sims 2 from Pleasant Sims. Like, I, I didn't know that... I didn't know that there was, like, a reaction when you give them a makeover in the mirror. But there is, and she changed Cassandra's hairstyle, and Cassandra was like, I hate it, and she was like, oh god, I'm gonna have to change it again. And I just loved that, it was just so... Ah, it was everything I love about The Sims rolled into one neat little package, you know? So, uh, I, I, so as I was saying, I, may, I started this before she left. I'm not trying to replace her in any way. I'm hoping to God that she will come back, because, again, I love her content um but i really i i watched her the streams on her vods of her test of time challenge and i ju i was just like i want to do pretty much that but worse i want to do that but amped up onto chaos mode i mean for fuck's sake my other main passion like let's play is my nisby which is basically chaos mode and it's going to be even more chaotic um, getting off topic of the test of time challenge for a second, I have been setting my Sims 4 up more balanced to be able to play that and record that, and yeah, it's going to be chaotic. It really is. I have autonomy on cheating. I have autonomy on confessing to cheating. I have... I do technically have autonomy on, like, Wicked Whims, but of course I can't play with Wicked Whims in for Sims 4 Let's Plays, but I do technically have autonomy on Wicked Whims. Um, so, but I'll have autonomy on wonderful whims, which should let them have autonomous woohoo times. Uh, but it, you know, I love, I love some chaos in my games. Um, I, I'm, I'm two things. One is I love chaos. I love just absolute chaos and trying desperately to make things function the way they're supposed to. And the other thing I love is being a micromanager <laughs> and this test of time. Like I say, I've recorded the first episode. This test of time is an absolutely perfect example of micromanagement for me and chaos. I'm genuinely so excited to keep playing it. Uh, I've only recorded the first one uh, because it exhausted me. It just knocked, knocked me out. I was just dead on arrival and I needed some energy over the weekend so I couldn't record more. Um, and that won't go up until next week. But, oh my God. It's so good. It's so enjoyable. And I've made everything a nightmare for myself. And I love that so much. So despite thinking I had like six hours of footage, I've actually run out. I've actually run out. So I'm gonna thank you all for hanging out with me for 44 minutes of voiceover. I hope you've enjoyed this. I am so excited to start posting this probably next week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you don't already know, I do have a Patreon where you can support me if you enjoy my content. But hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, all of that also really helps. So until next time, bye.